welcome back to episode 16 of the craft workshop podcast and yes as you can see i'm still not in the workshop um well firstly introductions if you are new thanks for stopping by um my name is storm uh as the clue from the channel title might tell you uh and i am live in the netherlands but i'm originally from the uk from manchester and i've been living here for about 20 years now with my south african partner lawrence and our two boys our human boys uh josh and will who were born here and our fur babies jack and daxter and um the channel is um a mishmash of um daily vlogs or weekly vlogs i should say but that consist of daily chit chats and um a crafty podcast because i am a bit of a craftaholic um and if you're one of the ogs welcome back guys nice to see you um i haven't really got much to share with you in the in the way of crafting because um you'll probably know because i've bored you silly now about my frozen shoulder situation <laughs> but the good news is um with the combination of a cortisone injection which i had i think two weeks now almost two weeks ago and um quite intensive physiotherapy um things are moving again so i'm just sort of quietly um you know starting to do like little odds and ends of crafting and just pacing myself because that's the danger when you when you're a crafter you're like oh this is great or you become engrossed in something and then it's that's when things start seizing up oh i should tell you sorry i'm really not a pro podcaster am i um, if you want to find me on other social media platforms i've got um at dawn's days is my instagram which i post almost daily on there so that's the regular update um and i also host a really nice um facebook group um it's quite small at the moment and um, people are not posting it's usually me who's posting and it's not my facebook group i just set it up but anyway it's called crafty world one and um it's just a generic um crafty group that people can just post what they've been working on and um share tips and ask questions so if you fancy joining um links to everything will be in the description um box below um i think that's all the formalities i wanted to say uh i've got myself a really really boring nest cafe coffee in a really really boring mug this i've got nothing fancy normally in my workshop i do have my own dawn's days mug but uh Mm. i can't even believe i've not been there for a month it's awful so anyway the plan was this morning um i was um well the plan yesterday was this morning i was gonna walk over to the um workshop which is yeah between a five and ten minute walk from the house and um go and work there for the day because at the moment so um i'm not sure when i'll be posting this or when you're even watching but at the moment it's the easter weekend break in the netherlands and lawrence is an avid um field hockey player he actually did play for south africa um several times and he still plays now and at the moment this i think it's either the world champions or the european championship i'm not sure one or the other is on and in the netherlands um football and hockey are the two most played sports so they're televising a lot of the hockey matches on um dutch television at the moment so um lawrence is very happy for me to be out of his not hair because he's bald out of his way and i was going to go to the workshop and spend the day there pottering because i also wanted to play around with some yarn dyeing and anyway got up this morning and it was like blowing a gale gray raining and then actually when i made the decision i said to Lawrence, i'm just going to go up to my craft room and i thought oh i'll do a little podcast um it started to snow so it was a good decision um as i said not really got much to share with you but you know i like to waffle i did post um the weekly vlog um yesterday sunday so if you did watch the vlog because i know there is there is a bit of an overlap between people who watch the vlog and people who watch the podcast 
I might be in danger. Well, I will repeat myself, not in danger. I will repeat myself. But um, yeah, I just don't want to um, not show some things to people who are just not into vlog style videos. Um, so where to begin? I haven't made notes this, um, this week. Um, I'll start with, oh, I'll start with um crochet because i've got it on my knee actually so i i joined um a cow um crochet along and i've been so excited about um joining in and i've been watching all the progress i did share um a little bit last week but in case you didn't what uh, not last week in the last podcast in case you didn't watch it um i've hardly made any progress and in fact i had to frog what i had done just because my concentration is so bad but i have i've caught up to where i was and i've done a little bit beyond so i'm almost I'm almost finished with the waves and what i did i forgot um i think yeah you crochet in the back loop on the first uh, row of color per wave and i just forgot so I was merrily crochet, crocheting away and I actually had a fine old time. And then when I looked at it, it was like, why do you look so weird? And then, so I had to frog, um, fortunately it was only, I think it was three colours I think I'd done. Anyway, so that's, that's where I'm up to. Still no progress, but if you haven't seen it before, it's gorgeous. It's, um, it's, the blanket is called Picnic on the Blanket and the, it's the crochet along as well and the um it's run by um Koshal crochet who's eleanor i think her name is um and there's two colorways there's like this red sort of gingham effect and then these like bluish tones which i think she calls it um, the autumn one i thought i can't remember waves is week two so i've still got to finish this and do the other end and there and they've just released week five but anyway it's the joining in that matters. I'm really, really enjoying it. But as I said, you know, with my shoulder, I've just got a sort of, sorry, I'm fiddling. It's not, it's also not very professional, is it? <laughs> um, what else? That's all I've got to show you with crochet. Gosh, it's really going to be a thin on the ground um, podcast. But anyway, uh, what I did manage to do, so I have managed to do little bits of things, um, even though the april uh pattern has been released um i'm only halfway through the um year of dishcloths um who is hosting year of dishcloths the lady's name is garlaine or garlene and i forget what her company or her, or her account name is but um this is march which is double dutch and i'm doing it in um scapia's katona and I can't remember the shade. And I, of course, I've done my usual trick and loss, the ball band. Uh, I understand, I was talking to my um, my litty friends uh, on Zoom the other day. And some, some of them were also doing the um, year of dishcloth. And I was like, why is mine smaller than some of the others? And we were all, for, for, for gauge, for, for scale, we were all holding up against our head on screen. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure if somebody was watching, they think we're all bonkers. Well, we, we are slightly, but in a nice way. Um, and apparently, uh, it's a you're supposed to use double knit cro um cotton, and I've been using the um Katona, which must be, I don't know, what would it be classed as? Single, but not well, not single ply. Anyway, I don't know. Apparently, my cotton's not thick enough. But anyway, I like them, so I don't care. I'm having a great old time. Uh, April's been released. Can't remember the name of it, but it's got all like interlocking sort of. It's it looks a little bit like a twisted basket weave kind of knit. So looking forward to trying that. Uh, I've got to take it easy though because I've noticed. Um, not done a lot, but I've done a little bit of crafting over the weekend, and I can feel like my shoulders a bit twingy, but i'm pacing myself uh the other thing i made some headway on so this is um the top is um lindsay tranter's um stitch crate of her flight of the bumblebee sock pattern i don't know if you can see very well in the light but these little little middle sections there little bumblebees 
uh i've been doing this for ages but um the heel was a german short row and i think in the last podcast i said i'd never tried a german short row heel before and i was debating whether to do my usual um heel flap and gusset that i'm you know i'm quite sort of you know comfortable with now and they fit me well as well uh but i thought no you know what it, that's what the pattern calls for Lindsay's also got a video to go with uh the pattern so it doesn't give you the whole you know all the stitch numbers that's all in the pattern but the video explains it i would say if you want to have a go at this because it, it's good for a couple of reasons um if you buy that pattern off Lindsay, you can incorporate this heel into any of your uh you know your day-to-day -day sort of sock knitting uh because um i'm mine's on a 64 stitch which i think would be a medium i think so yeah in Lindsay's um pattern you know this is a, a heel for a 64 stitch sock which is what i need anyway anyway i'm starting to waffle um so as you can see it's like this it's also in stockinette so with the heel flap that's got like this ridged effect on it because um you're doing like slip stitching and per you know you you there's um a knit and pearl side um but with this it's all done in stockinette and i think it looks quite neater the only thing now you do get as with the heel popping because you do get stitches um uh, sorry holes so Lindsay's video shows you how to um pick up stitches but I, I figured you know what i really as i'm weaving ends in i don't mind if there's holes in it i'll just i'll just stick an extra stitch in you can see there there's a little hole that's fine the only thing is uh obviously mine's not very neat and i did hear that the german sh short row heel isn't the neatest uh but you do get like these little little holes uh along the joint so i mean yeah does it matter it's going to sit in your shoe what i will say is if i had known about this when i was learning to knit socks i probably would have started with this because ladies if you want to knit socks or you're new to um, knitting socks you don't have to pick up heels with this the whole heel is worked in um one go so there's no doing a section, decreasing and then picking, picking, you know. So it actually, I think for a beginner, this is probably the better method to go for. So anyway, I'll leave a link below of uh, that. But yeah, I'm not too far off now. Uh, I'm going to do a contrasting toe. If you want to know, the, the yarn is 75% um, uh, merino. 25% uh, polyamide and that's my own dyed which I don't sell it was a one-off experiment last year I was experimenting with speckling and uh, I'm quite pleased with it and then the contrasting um heel cuff and the toe is um lamy but uh, which almost matches the shocking pink but, um yeah quite pleased with that uh so that's as far as it goes with the knitting uh what i have been doing which i found um a lot easier going on my shoulder sorry oh, is um sewing i think like slow stitching is it the the, the hip thing they're calling it at the moment um so i uh i think i shared it in the last podcast jeanette um from crafty Cut creations sent me a an amazing package we, we was doing a um like a box swap and i've yet to do mine because um mine involves something with my shoulder so i've not been able to do it yet but um anyway jeanette sent hers and in that there was a whole load of goodies for english paper piecing which i've become obsessed with and i started um I made a load of little hexagons, uh, quarter inch hexagons. Jeanette sent me um, three uh, sizes of these hexiforms by Ashmi Designs, uh, which you can leave them in. They're like fabric. Uh, actually, I've got one here. I can show you if you've not, if you've not seen one before. Um, I'll show you a close up. So, if you, I'm not sure if you'll see. This is like, like a, a felt felty kind of side and then this is like the 
woven looks a little bit like canvas and so you glue uh the felty side to the fabric so game changer although i don't mind using the papers the, the one thing that has come really 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 handy and i absolutely love it is one of these um so line pens oh my gosh this has been a game ch game changer and um Jeanette sent me a pen and there's one refill in the packet but i found um a quilt shop a dutch one where i can buy the refills from so i'm so thrilled with that and i don't know tell me if anybody does epp or english paper piecing it seems the consistency is like um prick stick is that something you could use instead uh i mean i'll buy the refills because i love the pen i like uh the size of it you know it's like the prick sticks are thicker um but anyway so I, I sewn a load of these um quarter inch hexi forms together and then um I'd, I'd made two flowers stitch them together and then i think i put them on my instagram and then my friend sam uh who's an amazing quilter like i mean sam's been quilting for years and um sam uh sam saw my picture and she sent me a photo of a dollhouse quilt that i was i was like you know what that's much better so oh sorry i unpicked the, um the two flowers i'll explain it now so there you go that way i so i joined these so these two were joined so i've unpicked them and then i'm framing all the flowers in like this pale green because this is going to be a little um like a bedspread for the dollhouse um probably the children's room i'm think at the moment or well, i don't know anywhere uh i might not even use it i don't know but it was i'm just really really enjoying it so yeah i'm framing each flower with this pale green and then when i've made the size that i want depending on where i'm going to use it i'll bind the edging i don't think i'll put backing on it because it is as you can see it's quite stiff but that's the thing when you're working with miniatures um a lot of um miniatures miniaturists um you use watered down like mod podge or pva and um you sort of glue and pin creases and folds in place because yeah you know it, it, when you're working on scale anyway i'm starting to waffle so this is how far i've got and i will say i'm going to give you a close-up now so please don't laugh at me <laughs> but this top flower was my very very first one so i just want to show you how the quality of the stitching is improving um so if you can you know you can see my stitches are really really visible and then all the green ones around it are all the new that these are what i did yesterday and you can see how much neater i've got and even this was the second flower this is all i'll turn it that way you know here's the difference in the stitching so definitely fabric fabric practice makes perfect oh my gosh what's wrong with me i can't even speak properly so um yeah really enjoying that so staying on the epp um route i've made i, I did i made this beautiful little um needle book um from emma jones at the uh vintage um sewing box my gosh sorry my mind has just gone completely right emma she's just got emma 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 from the vintage sewing box <laughs> so um i emma has made so these two things that i really like one of them is um she's i think she's got like a hexagonal bo box but she's put put a square box out um that i really like the look of so i fancy having a go at that but I want to get a bit better with my um, EPP before I even attempt that. But she does have like free patterns. So the box is a paid for pattern. And there's also um, like a hexi about so big uh, that you open up and it's got all like pouches and zipper pouches in it. It looks amazing. And I would like to make that when I improve. But for now, I'm just playing. So anyway, another free pattern that Emma has um, put out is a teeny weeny um, pin cushion. So I thought, I'm going to do that. So I got carried away yesterday and completely um, forgot 
to pay attention to the scale and I misread them so I covered I'll show you a load of the right way around uh, a load of hexes in these half inch uh, hexy form <laughs> and then when um, I haven't got the um, the pattern here oh yeah I had to so this is this is uh, the pin cushion is that size I made a template and it's like no no dog something went wrong so then I went back and checked and sure enough it's quarter inch so I use exactly the same um fabrics because I really like them in the same order and then I made this so um I'll make a template uh, sorry a pattern uh, cut out and then so this is going to be in the middle of the if you can see it in the middle of the uh pink cushion it's just so cute i tell you what this epp is so addictive and i've got one of these um i don't know what you call it i call it my sofa table one of these like fold up uh little tables so it lies flat against the end of the sofa and then i bring it out and then i can put it like you know when you want to eat your um food in front of the tv one of those kind of tr like a tray table i actually bought it years and years ago uh, for making um i used to i used to do a lot of felt work uh in fact i did i had one i had a bird somewhere i don't know I've made, i used to make like these sugar skulls and made early for um, loads of stuff so i bought it to do that and i haven't done felt work for years but um anyway it's, it's serving its purpose with the epp uh mm. staying on epp as well uh i found one of my um charity shop cheap trays i think it was like 50 cents uh, i'm gonna paint that and decoupage it and i thought that would be great you know for keeping my um my work in my projects so i'm not sure when i get around to doing that um and then other things i'm not gonna share i've made no headway with my j sweater uh that's actually too heavy for my shoulder so I, as you can see with the sock and the dishcloth i'm just doing small little things uh and just a couple of rows a day you know that's what it's going to take forever but i'm getting there um and then what other things am i working on uh yeah that's about it really I mean, uh, yeah i've always got loads of whips on the go haven't we all but let's not dwell on them <laughs> um uh oh one of the other things I shared on the um, vlog, so if you missed it, uh, Lawrence and I, we went to the garden centre. The Netherlands is still in quite strict lockdown and our infection rate is like leaping daily and still the vaccination programme is almost non-existent. Uh, but what they have done to stop like um, a, a countrywide rebellion, uh, they, they've allowed some shops non-essential shops because they've all been closed since um december they've allowed some to open uh by a booking system so i've been to three shops now i went to two um like hardware like uh if you're in the uk like b and m or target kind of shops which was great um talked about that in the vlog and then on Friday, um, Good Friday, Lawrence and I went to our local big, big garden centre for a whole hour and it was great. So I talked about this in the vlog, but if you missed it, uh, I've bought myself some seeds. So I'm super excited. We was planning to do um, plant the seeds this week, but with the weather being so bad and now the temperature's dropped, because I'm not doing seedlings in the house like I did last year. I'm just going to plant all the seeds out. I've got one of these little, like a greenhouse shelf thing. Uh, so I was going to start everything off in there. But anyway, um, I've got these little, these uh, these are buzzy seeds. Uh, they've got a whole range of patio uh, vegetables now, so which they didn't have last year. So I think that's, you know, because of COVID, everybody went mad on, we went mad on growing banana bread, making soda bread and planting things i seem to recall that was what the whole world went nuts with so uh, i've got these little snack cucumbers uh, which i grew last year and they were great 
uh, I've got these little snack carrots uh, which are they're round and um, I buy them from the supermarket as well but it'd be fun to plant my own so they don't need like a big um, depth on them a uh, whole mix of cherry tomatoes um, chives and then uh, I've bought uh, I've left them downstairs because they're in a, a like a rhubarb root so they're in a bag with compost and some kind of root that big and ginger a ginger root also in like a bag of soil uh so that'll be fun uh i wanted to plant giant sunflowers so only a few i'm not going to go crazy with it and then the other thing um i bought some plants um i can't remember what they were now but um we've got like this lawrence made this like a trough on wheels um and it's got a trellis at the back to hide our uh, rubbish bins because the dutch are quite big on recycling so we've got three big ones in the back garden so and the only place for them is at the end of the garden where we also sit we've got a sofa there so we're going to replant that so uh as well as the plants i've bought these um lobelia seeds so i'm just going to sprinkle them in i might even sprinkle a few in the front garden after we've weeded it and see how it goes so that was really really fun the other big thing that happened last week so i'm going to slurp again that's better um is lawrence had a birthday a significant birthday he turned um 60 and um yeah it was really it didn't go well in terms of what we hoped to do we were there was two ideas on the table because I'm turning 50 later this year uh, in October and we were debating we were either going to do one big joint party or we was going to do one really nice family vacation like a nice nice one and um yeah we, we've we didn't plan anything nor are we planning anything in the future because we just don't know how things are going to look so um yeah lockdown was a bit rubbish really for poor lawrence what i did do i um i asked uh, as many friends and family as i could to send uh video clips and then um I, I edited everything together and put music over it and um that was um like a a virtual uh party and i can't believe how many people um sent clips i mean the video it's well over 20 minutes you know and you see you can imagine for just people say hi happy birthday <laughs> it was like quite a lot joined in that was nice but yeah that was a bit rubbish that yeah he had his birthday in lockdown um okay that's all i've been working on but i can share some incoming with you well i'm gonna share um again i've shared these on the vlog but um i said i would talk about them in the podcast but uh I do you probably know but i do like to try and support like local artists uh when i can in holland but then sometimes i have friends uh you know like via my social media that when they they post something it's like oh i really really like it like at christmas um uh maria is um crafts are, are you she's um she made these beautiful ceramic uh christmas trees tea light uh christmas trees gorgeous so i bought one of them and actually i was looking for this for a while and i i found it again and i need to hang it somewhere nice uh nancy who's goat mama um goat mama jewelry or she might have changed her name now but anyway i just know her as nancy uh she makes um jewelry and resin and this is um a vintage uh cuban i think cigar wrapper that she's putting resin on a on a necklace so yeah i really when i see unusual things or things that mean something to me i like to buy them now we all know like myself a bee so when my lovely friend debbie rice who is the piggery studio um posted a picture of some prints that she's doing um had to order one so this is debbie's this is her painting and then she's done some um limited prints and they've got uh like edition numbers and yeah and then and debbie sent me all other lovely lovely goodies so 
if you're in the UK, go and have a look at Debbie's um, Etsy shop. It's amazing. And she's got these beautiful Robin prints as well at the moment. They're so nice. Uh, but yeah, I had to have a bee. It's like, oh, it's gorgeous. Um, I did buy something for the dollhouse, uh, which I've left downstairs. But um, if you remember, I'll try and insert a picture here somewhere. Uh, the other thing... I, um, so I don't normally do this, but um, I joined, so at, at Vlogmas, I think it was Karen um, from Stitches and Jack. Yeah, I think it, I was watching Karen's and Karen had, um, I think it was an advent calendar or she'd bought some yarn from uh, a, a British uh, yarn dyer, uh, Beth from Telling Yarns. And I just remember thinking, wow, the colours were amazing because many will you will know and i've just said it i i also dye my own yarn and that was something i really wanted to get going this year as a little business i spoke about this before but the postage costs in the netherlands are just through the roof and for me to post a skein of yarn the postage at the moment is the is the price for skein so i wouldn't ask it and people wouldn't pay it so that's all on hold at the moment but anyway um I did subscribe to um, a yarn um, club, a six month yarn club that Beth was um, doing. And you could cancel at any given time, but she, I was her first international customer. And I was really thrilled that she, you know, even agreed to post for me. Cause I was like, oh please, I really, really like your yarns. Um, so what we did rather than send, rather than me getting a skein a month, I actually got them in two batches of three, which worked out really, really well. Um, and then so what i'll do i'll show i've got all six of the skeins now and beth said it was fine to share it uh because oh, i'm not going to give any spoilers when she said no no it's absolutely fine i'm need my reading specs on for this sorry so these are the first three they're all sort of the labels are all bashed up and the skeins oh and there's a pin uh <laughs> the and the the they've all become unraveled because they've been sort of I've had them squashed in there and then I've got a whole shelf of yarn there. Uh, but basically, um, this is single ply sock weight. So this is the first batch I got. I've shown these before, but I wanted to show you all six of the, the colorways. And the, these are all Harry Potter um, themed. So this one is uh, Aboard the Hogwarts Express. This is my favourite. Love this. Uh, this one is uh, the Dark Mark. Beautiful. And this one is uh, Malfoy. Again, gorgeous. Um, but I realised not really a big, big fan of single ply. So I asked Beth, can I change it? to um another uh yarn base and she said yeah sure you can because she would, she literally she was posting them out that that week um so um this is um high twist and it's um 75% merino super wash and 25% nylon um so they're not really, I don't know if I could really work with them together, but I might, I'm tempted to reorder uh, the single ply in some of the colourways again. But anyway, I'm wafting out. I'm going to show you. So, the, so these are all in the sock high twist and they're beautiful. They feel so soft. So here's, how gorgeous is that? It's like all salmon pinks and fluorescent pinks. This one is called... Rita Skeeter. I don't know, I'd have been tempted to call that Dolores Umbridge. But yeah, I can see Rita Skeeter too. Far be it for me to tell Beth what to name her yarns. But anyway, that's Rita Skeeter. And then this one is uh, Yule Ball. Beautiful. I hope the camera is doing the, the shade justice because 
she's a really really good dyer and as i said i do hand dye and i know how much work it goes into it's like layering you know you lay you dye in layers it's a lot of work and this one is called quidditch world cup beautiful and you can see there's some speckling in this as well so i'm going to put them all together there was a leaflet that came with the first one no it's not here i have kept it it's around somewhere and it tells you uh if you wanted to do some kind of fade with all the um the harry potter yarns oh i can't even hold them how you could fade them but um so you can see how they all work really nice together these like shades of pinks and greens and blues so absolutely thrilled with them so as i said i'm really tempted i'm really tempted to order the high twist in the all aboard the hogwarts uh express and the dark mark and i'm not i don't know i do i really really do like this but I don't really, it's not my, actually I might order that as well, the Malfoy, because that works really, really well with the Rita Skeeter. Look at that. Oh, just gorgeous. So, yeah, that was one of my uh, incomings. So, really pleased with that. Go and check out Telling Yarns. So, yarn is stunning. I mean, these, oh that that is not easy to achieve what she's done all those tones very impressed very very uh okay well i think that's all i've got to waffle about today a bit short i know or is it yeah quite short um yeah and not really very crafty um i've got physio again this week uh, I've been told to lay off the keyboard uh, from like the sorry, my back sore, from the occupational health. Oh, as you can see, I've got a new chair now. Um, so the craft room I'm sitting in, uh, the window was here uh, next to me, and then I've got all my I've got two monitors and my work stuff. So uh, I'm not I'm sort of out of action in the craft room, but um, I am I, I can make a little bit of space in the um, on the where you're sat on. You're actually sat on my sewing machine. If you're interested, it's a Husqvarna Viking Platinum 750. <laughs> and I do have a Singer Brilliance, I think, at the workshop. I don't like it, but for a spare, it was okay. But the Husqvarna is my favourite. Um, yeah, I'm trying to look around. Is there anything I've forgotten? No, no, I think I've covered everything. Well, at this point, I'll just... I'll just go then, shall I? <laughs> but um, anyway, on a serious note, if you did enjoy today's uh, podcast, give me a like and a subscription hit of the box would be great. And if you turn on the notification bell, you'll get notified every time there's a new upload. Although I can't distinguish if you'll be notified if it's a vlog or a podcast. So I'm sorry about that. Um, somebody did suggest why don't I have two different channels, but... To be honest with you, it's I work four days a week, so it, it's you know, and it my memory isn't the best at the moment anyway, you know, with the old uh, menopause and all that. So um yeah, I'm trying to keep my life as simple as possible right now for the good of the health of my household. Okay, I'll we'll see you in the next vlog or podcast, whichever you were uh, fancy watching next and um take care stay safe hope everything is going um well with your covid situation in whatever country you're in and um yeah drop me a comment below say hi let me know where you're tuning in from and i'll see you soon bye